Welcome again to another PSC Electrical video. We're currently today doing a video on some testing that we're doing in one of the schools that we look after. Um, just a quick introduction to what we do in when we're doing testing, especially on a large scale like this. Um, obviously, we've got to consider when the obviously the design of this installation was done. And the other thing is we, when we're testing, we're making sure that the design of this installation is still sort of being upheld and still complies to BSM 671. Some of the other things we have to look out for when we're testing, especially an installation like this, is obviously over the number of years there's been a lot of alterations done. We have to check the current criteria of the alterations and make sure that it doesn't obviously have a, a detrimental effect to the actual original installation. So that's another thing we look out for when we're doing this testing. So some of the advice I usually give to anyone, especially when doing testing on this large scale, is don't get overwhelmed by the size of it. What I always say to people is try and sort of imagine it as a house, but just on a larger scale. Another thing I always try and do is, is almost like a family tree when we do something like this. You always start at the beginning, and I would always say like, that's the grandmother, and then as it spreads off, you, you create more fuse boards and more fuse boards, and that creates an overall family tree of how the installation's done. From that, it makes it very easy to break down smaller parts of the installation and just tackle smaller parts of the installation bit by bit at a time. It makes it a lot more, more manageable. So we're current very early stages into a job like this at the moment. In a school this size, we're estimating it to take us roughly about three weeks worth of work doing it. So at the moment, we're, we're still at very early stages within the actual testing of it. At the moment, we've just been testing a small part in the art block, i.e. the isolators over there where Marshall and that's been testing earlier and some of the fuse boxes within the, the art block, so yeah. So another thing to bear in mind when testing places like this school, some of the equipment like the isolator and that over there can be up to 30 to 40 years old. Part of the test that we're doing is obviously when doing like switches and things like that, we're making sure that the functional switch actually switches off and it switches on. Again, some of this equipment's probably not been turned off in over 10 years. So these are quite important things to be checking, especially in the emergency side that it does need to be shut off. So another thing to consider when doing these larger jobs is there will be a lot of limitations agreed with the client and things like that and even on-site limitations that you can't do. But we must try and stress to the client that these things might not have been tested the last previous time so it's really important to try and test as much of the building as you can and try and work with the clients as best as you can to test as much as you physically can. On sites like this, we have limitations and agreed limitations while testing, but I find it very important not to try and use any of these limitations or agreed limitations. We must try and test as much as we physically can. As we're finding out on this job, when it was previously done five years ago, there was a lot of limitations and a lot of agreed limitations. So we, we basically said to them that we need to try and get in there and test all the bits and pieces that they didn't test before. And as we're finding on this job already, that where the limitations were done last time, some of the switch gear and isolation stuff are not operating the way that they should. That's why it's very important to try and test as much as you physically can while on site. So we've been on this project for approximately about a week now. Um, obviously what we're finding is we were given a list of bits and pieces that they wanted us to check before we obviously came and we quote it on, things like that. But as the week's now gone on, we're noticing that there's a lot more information that was missed off previously by other companies. And obviously we we were given something like approximately 40 fuse boards to test and we've priced it off on that regards. As we've gone around testing, we're, we're realizing it's closer to maybe 60, 70 fuse boards. And obviously these are things that we need to go back to the customer and maybe liaise with them and have a discussion with them. Because as far as we, can see it's going to take extra time now to test all of that so it's very important with with doing jobs like this is the information is correct before we get it because obviously we can only quote it off of what sometimes they tell us now we did do an on-site assessment as well but again a site this big is so big that it's very hard to find all the areas and check everything all from just a walk around quotation so it's a very large job. What I've seen is where other people didn't do the tests or some people have decided to miss areas out, we're finding like closet rooms and things like that, that there's hidden fuse boards in the ceilings, there's hidden fuse boards in store rooms. So we have to go around and obviously check all of this. So another thing on this particular project, we've been very lucky. We found that obviously there's been another company that's tested it before and we've got some information on it. 
What's sort of vital about this sort of information is when we're testing the stuff now is we can reference the old certificate to the new stuff and we can sort of get a real feel of if the installation's really deteriorated or anything like that over the years. So a couple of other things we always usually get asked is what type of software do we use to do our testing on? We currently use EasyCert purely because I find it's the more flexible software out there and it allows me to do a lot with in terms of the readings and with the certificates, with the fuse boards and everything. We can really sort of design the actual install and it shows you everything you need to know about the install. It gives us really good printouts and it's very clear for us to use. So another thing on this particular project, we've been very lucky. We found that obviously there's been another company that's tested it before and we've got some information on it. What's sort of vital about this sort of information is when we're testing the stuff now is we can reference the old certificate to the new stuff and we can sort of get a real feel of if the installation's really deteriorated or anything like that over the years. So some of the things we come across when doing a project this big is obviously we've got so many fuse boards in, in this install we have to check a lot of it so for argument's sake this fuse board is correctly identified and is quickly switched off by the appropriate switch gear obviously what we're finding on some of it because of the install so old some of the switch gear is not actually operating correctly and these are just some of the things we have to look out for also things like in the fuse board we're noticing some of the cables have been extended and crimped and joined obviously as a part of the testing engineer, I have to make sure that this has all been done to appropriate standards and things like that. And obviously we need to go into quite detail because when giving this to a client, as you can imagine, there's so much stuff here. We need to be very specific and sp precise because when it comes back to maybe even rectifying it at a later date, other people might need to be able to read from the same information and be on the same page as us. So detail is very, very important on a job this big. So some of this install can be up to like 80 years old. Now the thing we need to find out from the client is whether this stuff is still in operation or whether it's now obsolete. Obviously we haven't got all the information so we're constantly in a battle every day to sort of liaise with the client, find information and try and sort of do the best job that we can because obviously if this stuff is now obsolete for us it would be a case of right we need to do the right thing and make it properly obsolete not just leave it there and not operational properly disconnect it and make sure that it's not being used and obviously again as we've noticed in a install this big some of the switch gear is so old that it's just not operating correctly so we might need to go down the lines of properly checking all of this so something nice to see on a particular install like this, this is all quite new where they've had the submains all changed. But what I like to see is they've allowed for so much more expansion. So in the future, if they ever decide to put anything else new in, it just makes it very simple because we've got plenty of room. Again, in a room like this, it's very nice because they've got a large building dedicated for something like this. Again, it makes it so much easier to work in because we've got so much more room. It's also nice to see that they've installed things like surge protection, so I know the install is protected by surge protection. And then the other thing is, is we've got the um, meters and that, so we can see exactly what parts of the building are generating and what they're generating at any given point. It's always nice to see. So another thing I wanted to point out is obviously some of the challenges we come across when testing big schools like this. We're currently in a sports hall and obviously it's very high level lighting. Now we're not expected to get up that high and we need to sort of take into account like obviously working at heights and things like that. So part of our general limitations is we won't do any testing above three meters high unless specified. We can do it, but obviously with something like this, we would usually um, arrange to come back with special equipment and that to get to it, just because it's a lot safer to obviously work off of the pro proper access equipment than just doing it off ladders. It's far too high and dangerous. So on this project, again, we're in the sports hall. We've got some equipment that's very high. On our observations, we put it down that we're not testing anything over three meters high due to access. Obviously, when testing a school this big, we don't know how much stuff is gonna be out of reach. So what we do is we put it down and we come back at a later date. So we'll say, for argument's sake here, we need to arrange to come back with the correct access equipment so we can get up here and we can check all this high level equipment. So at PSC Electrical, these are just some of the jobs that we do. Obviously, these are a large scale job, but it's not nothing that we can't handle. It just goes to show when you do jobs like this, that doing domestic, commercial, industrial, it just shows you that we're more than capable of doing anything along these sort of sizes and along these scales. 
So here at PSC Electrical, we're quite lucky. We've got a, quite a good team. Between the team, we can do all the different types of jobs. We've got solar engineers, we've got EV electri electricians, we've got fire alarm electricians, we do domestic, we do commercial, we do industrial. We're very blessed with a good, good team here at PSC Electrical.